Now that you know how exponential functions work, we've studied that they are one-to-one -one functions, which means that there is an inverse of them. So suppose f of x is 2 to the power x. Can you figure out what its inverse is? Go ahead, pause the video here, and let's see what you can do. If you are stuck, remember, whenever you are solving math problems and you're stuck, make your toolbox. So in this case, our toolbox is what? Yeah, so finding inverse means interchange input output and solve for y. So first step is to write it as y equals 2 to the power x, and then you do use the steps and see what happens. Go ahead. All right, so what you would have gotten is x equals 2 to the y. So we interchange x and y, or input output. Now we want to solve this equation for y, but you'll notice that the y is in the exponent. We have no ways of solving this. We can take y root, but what does that mean since y can be any real number? We don't know what that means. So if you want to solve for y, we are kind of stuck. However, we know that this is producing our inverse function. So x equals 2 to the y is giving us the inverse function. If we were able to solve for y, we can then write an explicit formula. But in order to understand inverse functions, you don't really need an explicit formula. For example, if I wanted to figure out what is f inverse of 8, so our function is 2 to the power x, and we want f inverse of 8. What do you think that means, f inverse of 8? That means in the original function, 8 is the output. So you are looking for, in the original function, what input produces output of 8. That's what we're really trying to figure out. So remember, input of inverse function is output of original function. So 8 equals 2 to the y. What is the y? In this case, y is 3 because 8 is 2 times 2 times 2. So this gives us f inverse of 8. So you can see that we could evaluate our f inverse values even if we didn't explicitly have a formula for inverse functions. Because logarithmic functions serve a purpose in real life applications, mathematicians then said, wait a minute, if we can work on it, then we, can just, we just have to create a notation for this concept. This notation is, instead of saying f inverse, log base 2 of x equals y. And what does that refer to? It refers to the inverse function of the exponential function with base 2 and exponent x. So log is short for logarithm. Logarithm base 2 of x equals y. That's how you read that. This notation is exactly what we have here, f inverse of 8. So how do we evaluate this then? That means that if I'm looking for a log base 2 of x, what you're looking for is 2 to what gives you x? So the output is x for what power of 2? That's how you can think of as soon as you see this notation log base 2 of x. It's important that you learn how to read and write correctly so that your brain can process the mathematics behind it. So let's take a look and see how you could compute log base 2 of 8, log base 2 of 1 8, and log base 2 of square root 2. Go ahead, pause the video here and see how you can compute these values. Don't forget, log base 2 of 8, 2 to the power 3 gives you 8. So you do the remaining 2. Come on, let's go. Don't be distracted. I hope you're not doing other things with it. This is a very important concept. It can be difficult for some people to understand this. So it's very important that this notation sticks with you and you understand how to read, how to interpret and evaluate this log function. 
All right, assuming you've come back, log base 2 of 1 8 is negative 3 because 2 to the power negative 3 gives you 1 over 8. Square root 2, square root means it's a radical notation, which is exponent of 1 half. 2 to the power of 1 half is square root 2. All right, let's see if you can do this next example. f of x equals 3 to the x. Go ahead, use exactly what we did in the previous example and see if you can find the inverse function. Go ahead, you can do it. Pause the video and see what you can do. Employing the same process as a previous example, we will have y equals 3 to the x, interchange x and y, and again, because we cannot solve for y, we'll have to use our notation. But in the meanwhile, f inverse of 1 over 9, what would that be? Remember, inverse function evaluations, so 1 over 9 is the input for inverse function, which means it's output for the original function. So we'll have 1 over 9 equals 3 to the power y, and we want to know what y is. So 9 is 3 squared, reciprocal means negative exponent, so that will be 3 to the negative second power is 1 over 9, so our answer would be negative 2. So our notation similar to before would be log base 3 in this case instead of base 2. So log base 3 of x equals y, that would be our inverse function. And again, all that means is that you're looking for what power of 3 gives you x. All right, see if you can evaluate these on your own. Go ahead, pause the video and see if you can figure out log base 3 of 9 log base 3 of 1, and log base 3 of 27. I'm speaking it out loud so that you get used to hearing it, and then when you evaluate it, you speak it yourself so that you can become familiar with this notation. Pause the video and see what you can do. Assuming you've come back, or if you are stuck, remember what you're doing. Log base 3 of 9 means 3 to what power is giving you output of 9? In this case, that will be 2 because 9 is 3 squared. So 3 squared is 9, so log base 3 of 9 is 2. Log base 3 of 1 then would be 0 because 3 to power 0 is 1. And 27 is 3 times 3 times 3, so 3 to the third power will give you 27, so log base 3 of 27 is 3. All right, let's take a look at this next example. f of x is 1 half to power x. So base is 1 half now instead of a 2 or a 3, so it's still positive base, but between 0 and 1. So again, same steps, y equals 1 half to power x. To find inverse, interchange x and y and solve for y, but again, like we said before, we can't, so we still can work with inverse functions. So f inverse of a quarter, so you have to ask what? One half to what power gives you one fourth? We know two squared is four, so one half squared will give me one fourth, so y would be two. So we can work with inverse functions, but our notation, do you remember what that was? Very good. Log base 1 half of x equals y. Which means we are looking for 1 half to what power gives you x. So again, see if you can do these problems on your own. All right, assuming you've come back, let's take a look. We know that 1 half squared is a quarter, which means that 1 half to the negative second power will give us 4. So that's why log base 1 half of 4 is negative 2. Log base 1 half of 1 is 0 because 1 half to power 0 is 1, just like 3 to power 0 was 1. 1 half to power negative 1 third is going to give you cube root of 2 because cube root of 2, that means it's 2 to the power 1 third, but your base is 1 half, so you would have to raise it to the negative exponent to make it reciprocal of 1 half. 
So 2 to the power negative 1 third is cube root of 2. So another way also to look at 1 half to power x, since 1 half is 2 to the negative 1, is to rewrite it as 2 to power negative x, which means that 1 half to power x behaves very much like 2 to the x, but reflected across the y-axis. And we'll spend a little more time on this when we look at graphs of exponential and logarithmic functions a little bit later. All right, so now let's take a look at some additional notation. If you are working with base 10, so log base 10 of x, then a lot of times you will see on your calculators, all you have is a log of x button. The log button on your calculator with no base means it's base 10. The reason for that is because it's the most commonly used base. So that's why log base 10 is just written as log x or log of x. Also, remember e, which was the number that we saw before. Do you remember what that was? What you may have remembered is that we came to 1 plus 1 over n as n went to infinity. Those numbers approach 2.718 dot dot dot. It was an irrational number, transcendental number, and we called it e. e for Euler, so it's called the Euler number. Log base e of x. Log base e is another logarithmic function that is very commonly used. And so the notation is ln of x. The ln is natural log. So natural logarithm of x means it's log base e of x. So this notation is important to go through. So let's use that notation and do a few problems. So go ahead and see if you can evaluate the following. Go ahead, pause the video and see what you can do. Just remember, log, when there's no base written, is base 10. So if you're evaluating log of 1,000, it's really log base 10 of 1,000. Go ahead, now do it on your own. Pause the video and see what you can do. So basically, 1,000 equals 10 to what power? That's the question you're asking. So in this case, 3, good. All right, do the next one. Good. You got negative 2 because 10 to the negative second power is 0 0.01. Log of 1 base 10. Base 10, so 10 to power 0 is 1, so therefore you'll get 0 here. Ln means natural log, which is log base e. So you're asking e to what power gives you e to the second. So in that case, it will be what? Good, 2. So when you see ln e squared, that means log base e. And when you're doing e to what power gives you e squared, then that's 2. All right, do the next two on your own. All right, what you would have probably noticed is that natural log of 1 over e to the third is going to be negative 3 because e to the negative 3 is 1 over e to the third. And then natural log of 1, so e to the 0 power. So that's why natural log of 1 would be 0. If you use your calculators here, you will see you'll get the same numbers. Not only that, but on your calculators, you can actually evaluate logs of numbers that are not just powers of 10. You can always estimate it in your head. For example, we know that log of 1,000 is 3. So if I asked you, what is log of 1,001? you know it's going to be 3 point something because 10 to the third power gives you 1,000. Go ahead, see what happens when you calculate log 1,001 and see what number you get. Good. All right, so let's go back and study f of x equals 2 to the power x and answer the following questions. Find its inverse function f inverse of 4, f inverse of 1 over 8, f inverse 1, f inverse 2 to the power 5.1, domain and range of the inverse function, asymptotes 
of the inverse function, sketch the graph of the inverse function, and also determine the end behavior. You already know how to graph 2 to the power x. So this will be a good practice for you. Go ahead, pause the video and see what you can do. So let's take a look at the answers. Part A, we've already done, so that's why I've skipped it here. We know that for part A, what do you got? You got log base 2 of x, right? That's the inverse function of 2 to the power x. So if you want f inverse of 4, then 2 squared is 4, so log base 2 of 4 will give me 2. f inverse of 1 over 8, so that would be negative 3 because 2 to the negative third is 1 eighth. f inverse of 1, log of 1 base 2 is 0. 2 to the power 5.1 will give me 5.1 because we're looking for 2 to what power gives me 2 to power 5.1. So parts B, C, D, E, and A, we did all of that before. So now let's look at the domain. Now, in order to find domain of the inverse function, do you remember how we already have some tools at our disposal? That the input of the inverse function is really the output of the original function, which means the domain of F inverse is the range of the original function, which is 2 to the power x. In general, exponential function a to power x when a is greater than 0 has domain negative infinity to infinity range 0 to infinity. So the domain of the log base 2 of x function would be 0 to infinity and the range of the inverse function will be negative infinity to infinity. You also know that Exponential functions have y equals 0 as your horizontal asymptote, which means now, since x and y are interchanged, you will have x equals 0 as the vertical asymptote for log base 2 of x. All of these points that we can graph, including the asymptote, will allow us to get the graph of the inverse function. So let's look at that next. So you can see if we plot points, either from the previous parts that we did, or you can also use your knowledge of y equals 2 to the x graph, and interchange x and y since this is the inverse function. And you'll notice that the x-intercept is 1, 0, and you have a whole bunch of points. You can notice that x equals 0 is the vertical asymptote and n behavior as x goes to 0 from the right function goes to negative infinity and as x goes to infinity your log base 2 of x graph will go to infinity. So you can see that in order to graph the log base 2 of x graph we didn't really use any new material. All of these concepts you already knew. All right, go ahead, do this problem number two again on your own, 1 half to power x and a through i. Go ahead, see what you get. So you want the inverse function of 1 half to power x. We won't discuss this because I want to get to some other things, but you can try this on your own or look at the textbook. So in summary then, what we have here is that in general, log base a of x is the inverse function of a to power x and we can plot points and see that if a is bigger than 1, our graph has n behavior where when x goes to 0 from the right-hand side, function is going to negative infinity, and f of x goes to infinity as x goes to infinity. On the other hand, if your base a is between 0 and 1, then as x goes to 0 from the right, your function goes to positive infinity. And as x goes to infinity, the function value shoots to negative infinity. The vertical asymptote for both when a is bigger than 1 and also between 0 and 1 is x equals 0. Both functions are 1 to 1, and their inverse function is the exponential function a to power x. 
the domain is 0 to infinity and the range is negative infinity to infinity.